Hi, welcome to the Snowflake scripting course. So firstly, what is meant by Snowflake scripting? In Snowflake, we have a flexibility that we can write stored procedures using many languages like JavaScript, Python, Scala, Java, along with the SQL. So the stored procedures that can be written using SQL are called Snowflake scripting. Okay, so in this course, I'll explain this content. So firstly, I'll cover all the concepts of Snowflake scripting. Then I'll go through some advanced topics with some generic procedures. Okay, so this, the concepts of Snowflake scripting includes, so firstly, what is meant by a stored procedure? So what are the blocks present in a stored procedure? So what is meant by a variable? How many types of variables are there? So how to declare and use the variables? and how to run a code snippet by using execute immediate statement. Then I'll discuss about table literals and identifiers and how to use the literals and identifiers in stored procedures. Then I will discuss about flow control statements. So there are two types of flow control statements, conditional statements uh, that is if and else, if else and case statement. And the second one is looping statements like for loop and while loop. Then I will explain about the very important concept cursors and result sets. Then once that is completed, I'll explain how to handle exceptions uh, while writing stored procedures. Then I'll come to the last topic transactions. So once I'm done with the, the explanation of all these topics, all these concepts of snowflake scripting, then I'll move to the practical implementation of these concepts. So while explaining all these concepts, I'll explain along with the examples. That means I'll provide um, many programs for your practice. I'll, I'll execute and show it to you, all the examples, so that you can practice at, whenever you have time. Then, uh, once I'm done with the concepts of Snowflake, I'll come to uh, Snowflake Information Schema. So I'll briefly explain about what is meant by information schema that is present in Snowflake and what are the objects present in the information schema and what is the use of those objects. Then the very important thing. So I'll explain some 10 plus generic stored procedures. Those are very important in real time and those can be used in your projects as well. Okay, then I'll come to how to debug stored procedures. So what is meant by debugging? So debugging is the process of identifying and fixing the errors in the stored procedures. So I'll explain this topic. So this is very important. So lot of people struggle here. So to identify and fix the errors. Okay. Then I'll come to the topic UDFs, user defined functions. So what are the types of user defined functions available in Snowflake scripting? I will show, I'll show with examples. So then lastly, I'll come to the conclusion part. Okay, so I'll explain each and every topic with a lot of examples. Okay, so that you can practice. Okay, then, so I told you, right, so I'll be explaining some generic stored procedures. So what are those generic stored procedures that can be uh, reusable in your real time projects? So like th th there are 13 procedures I'll be showcasing. Okay. So first one is procedure for automated data loads. Then I'll come to SCD type 1 and type 2 implementations. Then procedure to automate uh, the one-to-one -one view creation in the database. Then a procedure to automate the dropping of all tables and views from a schema. So you, you may get a doubt. So what is the requirement to drop all the tables and views from a schema? So I'll explain in detail while explaining these procedures. Okay. And then I'll come to a procedure for migrating table DDL and use DDL from one database to another database by using a automated stored procedure. Then I'll explain. So along with the tables and views, we'll have procedures and functions and many other objects in a database, Snowflake database, right? So is it possible to migrate all those objects by using a stored procedure? Is it possible? If it is not possible, what are the other alternative ways? I'll discuss in this topic. Okay. Then I will explain a procedure for automating full load uh, that, that can be from staging to target tables while loading the data from staging to target tables. So uh, what is meant by a full load and how, 
I'll explain your procedure for doing the full loads. Then I'll come to the very, very, very important stored procedure. So how to automate uh, the delta R incremental loads. So this is needed in every project. So that we work. So this is very important. So I'll explain what is meant by delta R incremental loads in detail. Then I'll come to the stored procedure and I'll show you the code and how it works. Okay. So and then a procedure for sample data setup in the lower environment. Okay. For our uh, code testing. Then I'll show show you so how to do the code deployment by using github and schema change so how to create your own github account how to check in your code to github and then by using a schema change how can you migrate or deploy this code to the higher environment i will show you in detail okay so some of these procedures are very very important in real time like scd type 1 and type 2 implementations they are very important and the uh, procedure of automa automation procedure for automating data loads then uh, a procedure for automating delta or incremental loads okay these are very important and they can be useful in each and every project that you will be working okay so i'll explain all these uh, procedures are the implementations that can be used in your real time projects okay so what are the prerequisites and what is the duration of these codes so if you want to learn snowflake scripting so you need some basic SQL knowledge. So once you are done with the SQL course, so you can come to the Snowflake scripting and you need some basic idea on Snowflake cloud. So how um, how to create a Snowflake account, how to you uh, what is the snow site, how you can look at the databases and tables. So how to query the tables. So what is the architecture of Snowflake? So some basic idea you need on the Snowflake cloud. And then some basic programming knowledge. So this is not mandatory, but if you have some basic programming knowledge, that means if you are able to write some C program or Java program or any programming language, so that will be added advantage. That means you can learn Snowflake scripting very easily. Okay, but this is not mandatory because I'll take care. So even though you don't have any programming knowledge, if you have basic SQL knowledge also, I can very well explain okay and what is the duration of this course so i can say if you spend two hours every day okay you can complete this course within 15 to 20 days along with the practice so you can divide your two days like this two hours like this so one hour uh, read through the ppt watch the video and uh, next one hour keep it for practicing okay so never uh, copy paste the programs uh, and then run so type with your hands and then execute the programs. Okay. So that you will get very good hands on experience. Okay. So let's start the journey. So I'll explain each and every topic with uh, proper examples so that you will, you will get very good hands on experience. Okay. Thank you. Let's start the course.